Hello, brother sewing and crafting family. I'm Angie. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I'm, I'm Angie. Carrie Renata. Wolf. Hi. Carrie and I have been sitting here laughing, and now I'm all side <laughs> sidetracked. So I'm Angela Wolf. I'm a brother brand ambassador, and we have the fabulous Jerry Granada. Did I say your name right? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm I'm Angie Wolf. Angie Wolf. <laughs> and, 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 Angie Wolf, and I'm. Not a brother ambassador. No, I'm just kidding. Hi, everyone. I'm Jerry Granada. I'm a brother educator, and I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Jerry. So actually, you know, the best part of these shows is I get to visit with you beforehand, and Jerry and I were totally cracking up. So uh, welcome, everyone. We should have like a pre-show and a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, I think get everybody involved, have a little like circus time. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, definitely. So, hey, everyone, if you've never been here before, say hi. If you've been here before, say hi. Say where you're from. You never know. Your neighbor might be sewing or crafting next to you. And in my neck of the woods, fishing is on. So you just never know. Yeah. Awesome. So, Jerry, yes, I'm so excited. Um, what are you showing us today? Well, today I want to do a segment that I call Happy Feet. And this is a, a class that I like to teach um, having to do with presser feet. Now we know about the basics of presser feet, but we don't really, you know, some of us, it's, it's hard for us to get out of our box and stretch our creativity a little bit. So I'm going to show you some feet you, you may have heard of and didn't know what they do, or feet you may not even have heard of at all. We'll start with the basics. We'll go with the utility feet, and then we're going to stretch into some really fun ones. Okay, so this is kind of cool. And you know what? A lot of people that watch, many of them have every broad of the spectrum of the Brother machine. So right. the things you're showing will work on pretty much any machine so far, or is it going to be a yeah, combo? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And I'll get into that a little bit, too, about what to be careful of with the presser feet. And, and some of these may or may not be available for your machine, but I'll tell you what they are, and uh, then you can go from there. You can check with, I mean, in this, even any manufacturer, it doesn't have to be a Brother machine. We prefer that you do, but it doesn't have to be a brother machine. Um, and I, I will tell you what it is, and then you can check with your manufacturer. That's awesome. All right. So Arnell says she needs some happy feet, and uh, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right. So you take it away, Jerry. I can't wait to see this. Awesome. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Um, it's it's such a blast to teach this class because you could just see the light bulbs going on all over the place. and. You know, it, it doesn't hurt, especially with now of us that are still on lockdown. I'm in California, I'm in Palm Springs, and uh, I know that's really tough, but it's going to be like 95 today. I know, shut up, Jerry. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, even with us like in California, we're still locked down. So uh, maybe branching out just a little bit, um, expanding your creativity doesn't, doesn't hurt. Also with presser feet, a lot of us, me included, when I first started sewing, um, I was fighting with my machine and with my presser feet. I was trying to do things it wasn't meant to do. And, you know, the same with needles and thread. There are also, you know, we have no problem changing needle and thread um, to adapt to our project. But somehow when we get to presser feet, we don't think about that. It's just we just use our generic sewing foot and that's what we get used to. And that's what we try to do for everything. And then we get very frustrated, especially when you're trying to do um, like a zipper with a, with a regular sewing foot. Um, you can, uh, a lot of these things you can, and, and a lot of you have been doing these things, but you can make your sewing a lot more fun and a lot more easy. Now, you know, I do a lot of events and I hear a lot of comments. And one of the common ones I hear is, well, I don't want to have 300 feet. I don't have the space for that. Well, I'm in a 12 by, my studio is a 12 by 10 bedroom. So I get that. I, I know that, that space is at a premium. However, um, once you use these feet, you're going to see how easy and fun it becomes and how much the job that you have been straining with and, and having a problem with now becomes so much easier that you're going to say, well, usually you'd say, well, I would use this foot once. I never use it again. You're going to see how easy it is and you're going to find projects um, because I know I get it. I've been there. Um, all of a sudden your creativity is going to start going and you're going to go, well, I could use like this zipper foot for a tote bag. How much easier would it be? How much easier would it be when I'm doing my garment sewing? I mean, even something like a zipper foot. Most of us have a zipper foot, but there's different types. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start you off with the basics. I always say start with the, the feet that your machine came with. Um, just play with all of them. I know we, we, we have like some of us have like four to five feet. Some of us have like, I have a luminaire, so I've got like 5,000 feet that came with my machine. <laughs> I just was going to say. 
<laughs> not literally 5,000. But you know, Jerry, when you're talking about these feet, by the way, and I'm watching some comments, people saying they, they cannot wait to see this. Awesome. The ones that come with your machine is awesome, are awesome, I should say. Yeah. There's more than one usually. But you know what? Even if you have 5,000 feet, even if you don't have the beautiful container that comes with the Dream Machine or the Luminaire or something like that, um, I I started years ago taking my husband's fishing boxes and using them. You could use crafting boxes too. And that's how I organize them, put a little label in there, and you can stack up a lot of feet. They're organized. You know where they are. So you definitely have room for 5,000 feet. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, I, like I say, I always say, even if you have like just a few that came with your machine, start with those, really get to learn those and then you can expand. So again, some, some machines don't come with a zipper foot and it, you know, it's, you're, you're trying to fight, trying to insert a zipper without a zipper foot. And it just makes it so much easier. Or if you're even, you know, and I'm going to show you as we get into this, um, some other ways to use the feet that you may have not have thought of that will expand your use of them. So you don't just say, okay, well, I bought a zipper foot. It just does zippers. Well, no, it really doesn't. It does so much more. Um, you can do decorative stitching with it. You can do a really great top stitch, very close to a seam line. Um, it's, it's awesome. So I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, take us over there. All right, let's go over to the machine and we're gonna we're gonna have some fun here. We're gonna have some happy feet. So here we are. So I'm like I said, I'm going to start with the basics. And um, maybe this is what your machine has. Most machines have now. This is if you have even an old, old, old machine, uh, vintage 1940s, 1950s, you're gonna recognize this foot and this plate. This is a straight stitch plate and a straight stitch foot. This is about as basic as it gets. Um, this almost, I, I won't say every machine, but almost every machine comes with this in various forms. Um, one thing that you'll notice is there is just a small hole right up here. This is a straight stitch only. And most of your machines, once you change out your foot plate or you change out your plate and you change out your foot, your machine will automatically set itself for a straight stitch. Um, I, again, I have a luminaire, so it automatically knows that I can't do a zigzag with this. So this is for straight stitch only. For those of you quilters out there who do chain piecing and you haven't used this foot, oh my goodness, or your straight stitch uh, plate, your single hole plate, Oh my, this will this will change your quilting life. So many of us get frustrated when our, our fabric gets um, dragged down into our presser, into our uh, feed dogs, right? It gets sucked down into that hole because we're using the zigzag plate. Um, it works, it's fine, but again, it, I'm trying to help you prevent problems and make this more fun. If you change out to your single hole straight stitch plate, it virtually prevents all of that fabric from getting sucked down into your machine. So if you are doing chain piecing or even quilt, just quilt piecing in general, oh my, put this on um, and then use your straight stitch foot, which I will show you here. And this will solve so many of your problems. Again, it's a single hole here, a single hole here. So you can't zigzag with this. You're gonna have to change this out. But if you are just doing, uh, like I said, if you're just doing a lot of straight stitching or even top stitching, this is fabulous. Now I have markings on my foot um, the, it, hopefully you can see that little notches. Now for me, the, I know that the very last notch is a quarter of an inch. So from my needle here to this over to this little notch here, that's a quarter of an inch. So this almost acts like a quarter of an inch foot for me. So, so remember I said, I was going to show you like some, some other things these feet do. So you get more use out of them. Um, also, if you look at my bobbin case, I'll have to apologize. I know that I'm like really close in here and I've got like these Godzilla hands. <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way as much as I can. So I apologize. Um, I know when I get close up, my fingers turn into big giant things attacking the city. Um, so if you notice on my bobbin case, it has a quarter inch marking and a five eighths inch marking. So again, I know that this the very last notch on my foot is quarter of an inch. I have a quarter of an inch line here so once I drop my presser foot and I start, I'm going to grab some fabric here um, and just kind of just use this as an example of my quilt piecing. So I know once I align the edge of my fabric up with that little guide here, the very end, that's a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to drop my needle and I'm going to allow my fabric to just glide right along. And I'm following that little mark right here. I know that I have a perfect quarter of an inch seam and my fabric doesn't look how, look how beautifully flat my fabric stays all around here. 
Um, it doesn't, it's not getting sucked into the feed dogs. I'm not having any issues. And isn't that what it's all about, especially if you're doing a lot of piecing. And I know a lot of us are pressed for time and we piece quickly. This is great because then you don't get frustrated. So there's my beautiful quarter of an inch seam. Wow, that looks great, Jerry. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful straight stitch. It's really tight. You can adjust your tension. You can adjust your, your length um, of your straight stitch. And it just creates a beautiful, beautiful straight stitch. So let me change out my plate because now we're going to go to some of the other, other ones. Now I'll change this out and I'll show you. Don't look at the, the bobbin dust. Always clean out your bobbin cases after every bobbin change if you can. Just have a little soft uh, paintbrush, a little tiny soft paintbrush to just kind of dig in there and get all that fuzz out there. There's my, there's my uh, hint for the day. Put that back on. Now I'm going to take my straight stitch foot off because I don't need it. Now I'm going to show you, do you see now this is a zigzag plate. So I'm able to do zigzag now. So that's, that's awesome. And uh, now my, my needle is free to swing back and forth. And let's start with, um, that's kind of your basic foot. So, and your basic plate, just about every machine comes with that. Now with brother, we have what's called a J foot. This is just our basic general sewing foot. Um, it's used for, for most of your general sewing, garment sewing, you can use this for quilting. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you can do that too. But this is our general sewing foot. And uh, like I said, we use it for just about everything. And I'm going to go ahead and snap that on there. And a lot of people will ask me, what is this little black button for? What does that do? If you I are- I love that black button, it's my I, favorite. I know, well, you've got jeans. You've got a whole line of jeans that, that you've designed. And you know, for someone like you, who's, who's going over those thick seams, this is invaluable. If you have like a lot of fabric bunched up, and I'm just gonna take a big pile of my sample fabric here. And let's say that's your seam, right? And you're trying to go over that. Or, or you've got it this way, and you're going from a single piece of fabric into a big giant uh, lump of fabric, well, your machine is going to have some issues with that. Um, it's, it's not really, it's going to have an issue going from a single to a, a big bulky seam. Once you hold in this button, if you notice, notice how my foot sort of locked in place here. What that does is as I go, it's going to stay, and as I go over that seam, I'll let it go, and it will start stitching. So what it does is it locks your foot in place so it can go over those big bulky seams and it's wonderful. So Angela, you know that too, because you said you you like that. So I use it's it a lot. My favorite foot. I remember or not favorite, my favorite feature. I remember when yeah. somebody showed me that one time years ago. Yeah. And I was like, that's the magic button. <laughs> that's the it best thing. Your life. <laughs> you it know, does. and I still, those who know me and follow me know that I use really unusual fabrics in my quilts. I'm I'm mainly a quilter. And uh, so I, you know, I use upholstery fabric and, and all sorts of real heavy, thick fabrics in my quilts. I'm going over big, heavy seams all the time. This has been a lifesaver trying to piece that little, you just, a, it's amazing how a little black button can change your life, <laughs> but it really, can. it really can. So this is my general sewing foot. Now, what I'm going to do is, you know, I, I apologize that I don't have like five or 10 cameras set up, so I can't switch back and forth. Um, but what I'm going to do is set up my machine for quilting. Now, on my Luminaire, I have a quilting category, and I'm going to choose stitch Q-02. Now, watch my needle right here. Watch what it does. See how it jumped? Jumped right over. That now has set my machine for a perfect quarter of an inch. So I can use this generic sewing foot as a quilting foot. All I have to do is take my fabric and run it. We'll just say that this is my piecing fabric run it right along the edge and I'll drop my presser foot. Let my fabric, again, here's my quarter inch mark. I'm letting it run right along and right beside that foot. And this is now at a perfect, I'll drop my needle so you can see a little better. My needle is now at a perfect quarter of an inch. So I can use this foot for quilting as well. So again, double duty. So a lot of these feet can do more than just one thing. So there's there's that, there's the J foot. All right, let's 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 move on a little bit. Any questions about that so far? Now, there are this, some questions, Jerry, coming up. Well, I'm watching them roll in. So just so you all know that I'm watching your questions. And then when Jerry takes a break in a little bit, I'll give you, uh, I'll bring those up. So don't worry. I saw those. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. If you have any questions, I'm please, I'm more than happy. And, and Angela will be checking. And it doesn't bother me to um, 
to get interrupted as I'm, I'm going through my flow here. I, for those of you who may not know me, I was in the military music system for 21 years. And uh, I have played in bands just like the Blues Brothers where you go up on stage, it's not what they wanted, and they throw stuff at you. So you're... <laughs> You're not going to bother me with a question, trust me. I won't, I won't throw anything at you, Jerry. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here is our next foot. Now, this is one that a lot of us have in our presser feet stash, so to speak, or come with our machines, and you either don't know what to do with it or you've never used it, and you think, what's the difference? So I'm going to pull up my, um, my other foot here, and I will set these side by side. You can see there's a big difference. Um, first off... Uh, this is your general sewing foot here. Oop. This is your character and decorative stitch. And the main difference is, yes, there's there's a difference here where you can see, you know, you're, if you're going to follow along a seam line, it kind of guides you right into the needle um, through the foot. But the main difference is on the bottom. If you look here, there's some little channels here, but this is a flat foot. If you look at the character and decorative foot, there is a big channel that's cut out. And what that does is it allows all of your stitches to flow right on through without catching on the foot or your foot having to rise above your fabric. If you are doing heavy threads with decorative stitching, this foot is going to ride on top of those stitches. So it's never really going to sit flat on your fabric. If you're trying to do a seam or something like that, you're not going to get great accuracy. This foot will allow you to do that. These two sides here and here are what stay tight against your fabric. So you're always gonna have beautiful stitching and it's going to allow you to um, always have a foot on top of your fabric. So if you're doing character and decorative stitching and you're not using this foot, again, this is one that will change your life. You're gonna see how much more accurate your, um, your character and decorative stitching really is. So let me go ahead and attach this. And I'm just gonna take some blue fabric because it might be easier to see. I'm gonna switch over again. I'm sorry, I don't have multiple cameras here, but I'm just gonna do a very simple, oh, let's see. Let's just pull up the first one that we have. And let me go ahead and drop my foot. And I'm going to start some stitching here. Switch my machine up a little bit. And just do a few stitches. Again, a character and decorative. Now, if I had a line here, um, let's just take a pen and just draw just a generic line. We'll just say that that is, I don't suggest you use an ink pen on your fabric. <laughs> this is for demonstration purposes only. <laughs> so this will allow you to guide into your machine and it will keep you all on track. And so let me cut my thread. Um, the magic of this is what you can't see. So what you can't see is all of these stitches right here, are going underneath that foot. It's They're going through what I call the tunnel. They're going through that tunnel so that on either side, my presser foot is still pressed down to my fabric. That's what gives me accuracy in my character and decorative stitching. It also keeps everything nice and straight. If you use the other foot, you can kind of turn and curve and things become a little wonky. So again, that's, that's another basic foot that your machine probably comes with. Um, I'm not going to guarantee that, but again, that's, this is a character and decorative foot. So if you do not have a brother, just talk to your manufacturer about, you know, um, most of the presser feet are called by the duty that they perform. So like an edge joining foot or a ruffling foot, it's pretty obvious what it does. Um, it's, you're probably not going to find weird names for these presser feet, like the Marie Antoinette foot. I don't know what that does. What <laughs> that do? I have no clue what you're talking about. Most of them are named by their function. So, I'm, uh, right. I'm just done. Uh, there's a couple quick ones for you. So Catherine, yeah. when you said you're going to switch fabric, she was like, she's doing the back flip. She was happy because she couldn't see the white on white. And I saw some of you asking about the black button. And I also right. saw some of you that rolled in and said, how can I watch this video again? Well, guess what? You can. If you're watching this on Facebook, share it to your page. You'll be able to see it again as many times as you want. If you're on YouTube, you can go back there and also subscribe to the Brother Sews YouTube or Brother Crafting. And then you can binge watch all of these episodes for the last year. But you can definitely watch this over because uh, some people said they were digging looking for the foot and then they missed the part about the black button. So you can go back and watch. Now that first foot, some people said did not come with their machine. Okay. But you can go visit your brother dealer, just give them a call. You can also check their website uh, mm -hmm. and purchase it there. So a lot yeah, of the things that I've had, I have, I've had to purchase through the years. 
Yeah, yeah, and some may or may not be uh, come with your machine. So a lot of these are optional uh, things, but again, they're very fun. And Brother does keep their prices down on their presser fee because they snap on. So they're, you know, they just do their little function and they just snap right on. So they're very affordable usually, um, yeah. unless you get into like the big rufflers and things. But, you know, these, these snap on feet are really affordable, I think. Um, so, all right. Any and just questions? one more quick question for you, Jerry. Yeah, that last yeah. stitch that you were doing, Roz wants to know what stitch that was. That was um, in my, again, I have a luminaire, so it's 6 01. It's kind of a honeycomb ish stitch. Um, it's, it's more of an heirloom stitch. Uh, let me go back to it and show you. Let me switch over here. My camera. Okay. It's kind of a, like a honeycomb stitch. Um, it's good for joining fabrics or. Um, Gosh, it did decorative. You can you can add ribbon on either side if you want and sew over those. Um, so I mean, there's just again creativity, and that's what these feet will do. Is you're going to start seeing, wow, I can do that, and I can do this, and how cool would it be to do that? Um, so that's that's the fun of these feet. Awesome. Okay. All right. I will say, be careful. Um, I'm going to do a disclaimer here. Um, be careful when you're switching out your feet. You've got a raw needle here, so just be careful. There's my there's my hint and disclaimer for the day. Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you uh, the various zipper feet. I'm not going to do one because um, sometimes zippers can take time, but these these do make it easy. But I'm going to show you exactly what they are. This is probably the one that you know that comes with your machine. Let me get this one out of the way. Um, this probably comes with your machine in some form or the other. Works really, really well. Um, it is just a generic zipper foot. Again, you can use this not just for zippers. Imagine if you were, just say that this white paper is my fabric. Um, I could take the zipper foot and just go right along the edge and do a really fine top stitch. Um, so, so again, get out of your box a little bit and think about your feet in different ways. Um, zipper feet can also be used for piping, going along the edge of piping. I'm going to show you a piping foot, but um, this is, you can use that for this. Uh, the other one that I had here was, uh, this is an invisible zipper foot. And the reason why it's in invisible is because on the underside, you can see that there are channels here. And what those channels do is it allows the teeth of the zipper to glide right along. So you can see where your hole is, where your needle is. So you can get, let me pull it up just a little bit closer. You can get that needle right up to that groove, there we go, where your zipper is. So you can get your stitching right up to it and make it completely invisible. Um, so you won't see your zipper except for the little pull tab. And even then you could tuck that in. So um, if you're trying to do invisible uh, feet, uh, zippers, please use that foot. Again, it just makes things so much easier for you instead of having to fight with another foot that it wasn't meant to do. Um, okay, let's move on to, let's do the edge joining foot. Now, again, we're, we're kind of in utility here. The next uh, next set of feet after this are going to be all about quilting. So quilters, listen up. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting going here with you guys. So this is, um, some of these feet will start to look like medieval torture devices, but they're really not. They're, they're meant for a specific thing. They do look kind of odd. Um, but again, brother keeps it simple by keeping a little bar. You're just gonna attach your, your ankle here to this bar. And there is a little guide right along here and you get some, some cutouts here. You get some uh, grooves here so that you can adjust and you can pivot or you can bring your fabric up here and you have like little markers to, to keep everything nice and straight. But underneath, hopefully you can see this right there. There's a little guide here and that's right in the middle. And what that does is you're going to place a folded piece of fabric or, or a raw edge if you want to on either side of this uh, little guide and you're going to do a zigzag and this will bring your fabric together beautifully. So again, if you have been, let me go back to utility and just pull up a generic zigzag. And if you have been fighting with your machine about how to join things together and you're trying to do, if you do this with a generic foot, um, you can, but it makes it harder because uh, it's not made for that. And your fabric probably will be slipping all over the place. So let me go ahead and attach that. Now I'm going to drop my presser foot because I want to make sure that my fabric sits on either side of that guide. This almost acts like a stitch in the ditch foot, but really, um, hopefully you can see that, that little guide here, I'm just going to make sure that my fabric 
goes right up to that guide and it will then feed into my fabric or into my needle. And it will keep these two things. I'm just set for a generic zigzag. And I am not looking at my needle. I'm looking right here where the fabric is feeding on either side of the guide. And I'm just going to make so, sure. Jerry, what you just said right there is so important. Where are you looking on here? So I'm just going to make yeah. you bigger. Uh, because I think a lot of people get so focused on the needle when they're using these specialty feet or things like this, that all of a sudden you're like, this isn't working. So yeah. where you're looking is so important. Yep, exactly. I always stress that. Don't look here. Your needle is going to do its job as long as you've set your machine for what it needs to be at. Your machine, your needle will do its thing. Don't worry about it. You want to look right <laughs> here in front where the fabric is feeding into that guide. So once you do that, let me just finish this up here real quick. Cut my thread. And beautifully, I have joined those two pieces of fabric. So if you're doing any kind of heirloom sewing or entredeau or inset lace or anything like that, this is an invaluable foot to have if you don't have it. This is called the edge joining foot. Now again, your manufacturer may call, may call it something different, but it'll probably again be named after what the function is. Um, so it has joined those two pieces of fabric beautifully. So again, if I were going to use any kind of insertion lace or anything like that, those of you who do heirloom, oh my gosh, this is such a great foot for that. Jerry, that foot, I'm watching the comments roll through. Uh, that foot, I can I can just imagine the possibilities for designing your own fabric with that Exactly. Foot. Oh yeah. I mean, quilters, you can create your own fabric, cut it up, because you know that's what we do. We take good fabric and chop it up, and people wonder, what are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah, Linda says, Linda said that would be a great way to attach batting. Totally. Great idea. Yes. Wrapping. Perfect. Yep. Do a wide zigzag. Even use water soluble thread in the top and the bobbin. That way, when you wash it, you don't have any thread left on the inside of your quilt. There's my tip oh, for today. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Hey, Janice wants to know is there a specific letter or number on that foot? Um, let me look. I don't have one on here. It's just called the edge joining foot. Now, you know, some of the some of the feet do not have letters. Um, usually the letters, uh, the lettered feet for brother are the ones that come with your machine. Yeah. Um, this so one didn't come with my machine. Joining. Yeah. So it'll, it'll, um, so let me, let me show you really quick. If I try to do edge joining with just a generic foot, and here's why I like to show the differences because then you understand it makes it clear. Okay, so let me bring my needle back up. And right now, because I don't have that guide, I'm not really sure where my fabric is going to go. There is a little, on my foot, you probably can't see it, but there is a little groove here that designates the middle of this. So I'm gonna have to try and guide this into that groove and hope that my zigzag um, stays on either side and my fabric doesn't shift. <laughs> is this yeah. where I say how much coffee have you had or this, haven't? This is not working very well. <laughs> so again, I'm I'm having some issues because my fabric wants to spread apart on either side. And you can see that it's, you know, there's some gapping here. So this is not as good as when I used my edge joining foot. This is tight. I mean, what happened is those zigzags, because my fabric was lined up with the guides on either side, the zigzag actually pulled these two fabrics together, causing a nice tight seam. So there's not really any gapping in there. Whereas here, I was fighting with it because I wasn't, now I had to look in multiple places because <laughs> I had to make sure the needle was going on either side. I had to make sure that the fabric was being fed. But there's there's gaps in here where I didn't have that on the other side, on the other with the other foot. So again, this is something that, Again, if you do a lot of heirloom sewing or uh, any kind of lace or any kind of, like you say, creating your own fabrics, this is an invaluable foot for that. So Jerry, do you still have the first piece? You could just show those quickly just to compare because I'm thinking that second piece would not be very good for a pair of shorts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So again, I'm tugging on this and I'm not getting any gapping. That looks all. great. That was like, the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. Now on this one, I'm tugging and you can see I'm, I'm getting gaps in here. It's yeah. there's some of it's tight, some of it's not. I always say, if you're gonna invest the time in a project, why waste time to come out with a project that's just okay, right? We put in our, our hard work and our creativity. We want to finish a project, be really proud of it and go, 
wow, I made that. That is so cool. And again, this is what these feet do. It helps you have confidence. It helps you grow as a sewer. Um, and these do have value. They really do um, help you in your sewing. Absolutely. And Caroline, thank you. <laughs> By the way, uh, I love her projects, but she posted the brother foot number for all of you to look up. So thanks. Oh, thank you, Caroline. It's always so helpful on here. It's fantastic. Awesome. We love people like that. All right. The next foot is still kind of, we're going to start getting into a little bit of, of um, some feet you may or may not be familiar with. This is known by a couple things, an open toe foot, a candle wicking foot, an applique foot. Again, check with your manufacturer. I use this foot all the time, especially when I'm doing applique. You'll see on the back, <clears throat> it is well worn, it is well loved. <laughs> uh, again, I, the reason why is because I use unusual fabrics and um, some of them just glide right along the foot. This is, if you want, if you've been having a problem with visuals, I mean, look at that. That is just wide open. I wouldn't use this for general sewing, but again, these feet do have specific purposes and use the feet for what they were intended for. Um, it'll make your life so much easier. So um, don't fight with the foot. Don't try to do something it wasn't meant to do, um, but use it for what it was intended for. All right, so I'm going to grab another piece of fabric here and I have got a, um, th the best example for this is uh, applique. So those of you who do applique or you wanna do um, blanket stitching, um, or you want to uh, do some kind of, you know, some kind of, uh, you're joining your raw edge applique, or even if you have turned edge uh, templates that you have set down, but you need to sew them. This is so awesome because look at the clarity. I mean, I can see everything here. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my machine set up for a blanket stitch. And I mean, you can, you're free to choose whatever stitch you want. Um, and I'm gonna just lower my needle and look, I can get right against that, that applique because I can see it. If, if I have a generic sewing foot on here, this is all going to be covered and I really can't see it. And this will be easier to see once I drop. Look how close I can get right on there. So now as I'm stitching, it's going to do its little blanket stitch. I can see exactly where I'm going. And I'm going to do a curve. Wow, you can see that so well. And if you can't, you might have to put your uh, cheaters on like I have to, but <laughs> it's not the foot that's the problem. I mean, isn't that amazing? I mean, you can just, you've got so much clarity here. And I use this for all of my, when I'm doing all of my applique, either raw edge or, um, or turned under, because you can see it. You can also move your needle. So if you want to um, do decorative stitching along, you can move your needle all the way over to the right, all the way over to the left and use this inner foot as a guide, the intersection of the foot. So let me cut. I should have used a darker thread. I, I apologize, but- um, Oh, you we can, can see of, that really good though. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. So you can see how I curved around. Um, I also teach a class on blanket stitching because that's a whole, <laughs> maybe we'll do that on one of these shows. It'll uh, like uh, doing machine applique um, because that will, uh, it, it's, so, it's so easy to see. Again, let me put on my generic foot, my regular sewing, general sewing foot. Pop that on. Okay, I have no idea because, I mean, this works beautifully for general sewing, but when I'm trying to get a visual on applique, all of this gets in the way. So I'm now, um, this actually is going to frustrate me because all I can see is what's right here, just right up on my needle. So can I do it? Yes. <laughs> Does it make it easy? No. So I would use this for the piecing foot and then switch over to my open toe for the applique. Um, it just works so much better. And again, I'm, I just, if it's available, just get it. Why fight with your project? <laughs> yeah, I love that foot. Me too. I use it all the time. There's a metal and a plastic version. Either, either one works fine. Um, just depends on what you want. The clear one, you, you get a little more visual, but really I'm only concerned with what's right at the needle. That's where I'm looking. Okay, let's get into quilters. We're, we are now in your era here, in your domain. So I have a couple feet here I'd like to show you. These are, again, the little black button, <laughs> if you're going over thick seams. Um, these are quarter inch feet. The one on the right 
is a quarter inch foot with a guide. The one on the left is a stitch in the ditch foot. Again, they're described by exactly what they do and they do them extremely well. The stitch in the ditch foot is used for if you are stitching in the ditch. So if you have two quilt seams and I will use my um, edge joining as an example, we'll just say that these are uh, seams. This will say this is your quilt and you wanna stitch right along that ditch line, right where those two fabrics join. Um, and you're having some issues with things swinging back and forth or, or you're not getting a good visual, I'm gonna drop my presser foot. That little guide is now right in the middle. And again, just like the edge joining, I'm not looking at the needle, I'm looking right here. And where the, those two pieces feed right into that foot. And then what, whoop, I have reset for a straight stitch. I don't want the blanket stitch. Going over to one and then right in the middle, okay. So what's going to happen is, oh, I've shifted. There we go. Now we'll go right in the middle. So now, again, I'm not looking at the needle. I'm looking at where the two pieces are coming together. And I am stitching right in that ditch. Could you do this with the applique foot? Yes. But then the problem of things are going to start shifting. And now my stitching has gone right in between those two pieces of fabric. So um, again, uh, just another reason for this foot as well, if you wanted to use this as an edge joining foot, you could, it's not really meant for that. Um, and you know that by these the front of the feet here, this is a quilting foot, this is a quarter of an inch foot because those are quarter of an inch apart uh, on, the, on the inside. So um, you could, but again, use the edge joining foot if you're gonna do that. But this is for stitching in the ditch. This foot is a um, quarter of an inch foot. Again, if you are putting your pieces together, and I'll just do a, um, just a quick little, just a quick little example here. Now, what I'm looking for, I'm gonna drop my foot first because I want the edge of my fabric to ride along this little black guide. And what that will do, as long as my needle is set in the middle, I haven't swung it left or right, um, my needle's right in the middle. And as long as I let the raw edge of my fabric feed right into that guide, and just slow, uh, so carefully, I now have a perfect quarter of an inch right there. So again, if you if you don't have this foot and you've been trying to fight with your machine, trying to get a good quarter of an inch, um, it, this will change your quilt piecing. Also, if you notice, um, there is just, it's not a straight stitch hole. There is an actual uh, kind of an oval here. And what that is, is uh, you quilters may have heard of a scant quarter inch where you're coming in a little bit on your seams so that it, it um, if, for those of you who don't know what a scant is or have heard of it, it's you can bump your needle a couple threads uh, to the right. And what that will do is it takes up the, the bulk where your thread and your seam is. So you get an accurate quarter of an inch. So that's why you do a scant quarter inch. But if you notice, you can bump that over a little bit as well. So you can use this for a scant quarter inch as well. So you get double duty. And again, you get a whole bunch of markings. So if you wanted to pivot with this, you could. So from here to here is a quarter of an inch. So you should be able to pivot without any problems whatsoever. So those are your quarter of an inch foot. Hey, Jerry, just out of curiosity, when you do another stitch, uh, do you happen to have any, uh, just that darker fabric again? Some people are just having a hard time seeing that. Oh, light I'm on sorry. There. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to change over to black thread because that will probably make it so much easier to see. They're all going to say, yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just out of, while you're doing that, I just had a couple questions for you. Kathy yes. wants to know, uh, now I'm not sure which foot you're talking about, Kathy, because we've used a couple here, but she said she's quilting through three layers. Will this foot handle the fabric and the batting? I'm assuming it was the last foot you just used. Oops. Sorry. Um, will it handle the quilting and the batting? Usually this quarter of an inch foot is meant for piecing. Um, if you were using anything thicker, if you have a brother machine, I would switch over to like the move it foot. If you're gonna do anything thicker, there is a quarter of an inch foot and a stitch in the ditch plate that is available for the move it foot or for your, your uh, walking feet. So um, make sure you check that out because if you're going through anything thicker, I really would move over to the move it foot um, yeah. or the walking foot. 
there, you should be able to see a little better. So. Oh, yes. And um, just one more question from Kim. Why would you want to do a stitch in the ditch? What would you want to use it for? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I use it a lot because um, I do uh, a lot of uh, like applique type things or I do a lot of um, stabilizing of my quilts before I even start quilting. So I will stitch in the ditch along my seam lines uh, to stable with my batting and backing to stabilize my whole quilt. I will use usually a monofilament thread at the top and a 60 weight in the bobbin and I will stitch in the ditch just about around all the elements, um, all the, the parts of my block. So that way my entire quilt is completely stabilized and actually I'm free to quilt anywhere. I don't have to start in the middle anymore. Um, that's just how I do it because that's how my brain works. If I do one thing for too long, I get bored. So, <laughs> yeah. so if I start in the middle and work my way out and I'm using the same stitch over and over again, my brain just shuts down and goes, okay, we're done with this. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm free to move around anywhere because I've now stitched in the ditch and stabilized my entire quilt. Awesome. Um, and then just one more yes, question before you go on, um, and I don't think you'll be able to show this on your screen, but uh, Joanna wanted to know, how do you bump your needle a tick left or a tick right when you talk yeah, about Yeah, sorry. I, like I said, I don't have a bunch of cameras here, but um, there should be, on your machine, there should be something where it'll be like, a uh, on the brother, it's, it's L slash R shift, left, right shift. Um, whatever your manufacturer is, there, there should be a way for you to move your needle left and right. Um, most yeah, Joanna, and Joanna does have a brother. She just bought a brand new one. Congratulations. Ooh. And um, on that machine, I could look it up for you too, if you want to message me, but it's um, it's either the L or the right. And then there's also on the some of the less expensive machines, sometimes you have to use, it's actually where you would think you would be doing the width for the zigzag. So those are like the uh, mass machines. So just look at your manual too. It'll tell you there as well. Right, right. Yeah, this isn't, um, and these aren't really feet that usually come with your machine. So they're usually options. Some of them do, um, like the, the Luminaire does come with a quarter inch foot. I don't think it's that one exactly, but it comes with something like that. But again, if you're doing a lot of quilting, it's really invaluable. You, you really should have a foot that is made for your quarter of an inch. Um, oh, you, the you, all excited. You, she didn't even know she had the foot. Hey, that's like the, the happy dance. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, All right. Back. so I'm going to, um, I, we've only got 15 minutes, so we're I, we're really pressed on time. So I'm just gonna, I was gonna demonstrate these, but I'm just gonna talk about them. These are free motion feet. So this one is specifically for the brother machines. I'll go over this way to make it easier. This is called the O-foot. And this is, I use this all the time. Um, I do not long arm. Uh, I, for me personally, it's not my comfort zone. I prefer to move the fabric under the needle um, as if I'm drawing when I'm quilting. So for me, this foot, I'm a domestic machine quilter. So this foot is my absolute favorite foot because look at all the visual around the needle. I can see where I've been, where I'm going. Um, I just love it. So there are so many, now free motion quilting has gotten so big. There are so many feet. Uh, a lot of companies have done aftermarkets. I would be careful with those um, because some may or may not work with your machine. Always stick with your manufacturer's uh, recommended presser feet. Um, try not to get, try not to do the third parties because that can get a little squirrely. Um, some of them can actually uh, void your warranty. So just be careful. Um, try to use your recommended foot. Um, this is for free motion. This is an echo foot. This is not a flying saucer. I know it looks like one. <laughs> this is an echo foot and it has, and it's, I know it's hard to see. I apologize, but there are grooves cut into this foot that are a quarter of an inch apart. So this is an echo foot. And so once you do your line of stitching, you can use one of these uh, cutouts um, to follow along your previous line of stitching and give you an absolute perfect quarter of an inch away from your previous line of stitching. Um, again, various manufacturers have these. Um, there's also uh, this O foot in clear. Um, it's a clear foot. Sometimes it's called a darning foot, um, but this is, uh, you can get this in a clear plastic or acrylic. Um, Ours just happens to have the metal. So those are the free motion feet. Um, now we kind of get into a series of, um, they're, they're not necessarily, they're more decorative than utility, but these are what are called pin tuck feet. And these are for pin tucks. And you're probably wondering what the heck is a pin tuck? 
A pin tuck is a raised uh, area and they can be filled or unfilled and I'll explain what that means. But what it is, is these are used in conjunction with a double needle. And you put in your double needle and you run two, two um, spools of thread through the same need or through two different needles. You run them through your machine as if they were one. And then it splits at your needle here and you will put a thread on one side and a thread on the other. And you will use this foot to create your pin tucks. And I'm gonna show you one actually. There's a three, three groove pin tuck and there's a five groove pin tuck. Um, some other manuf manufacturers may have different variations of that. Um, just from an aesthetic value, uh, usually pin tucking looks best in odd numbers. So um, like threes, fives, sevens, nines. And, and that's kind of true for like even home decorating as well. You'll find that home decorators will say, uh, excuse me, designers will say, um, you know, try to do things in odd numbers. It's just more pleasing to the eye. So I have got a double needle here and I can't pull my camera in. I apologize. Let me pull the white under there. Maybe you could see here. Let me do this. There. I now have a double needle, two needles. Um, with this, usually with pin tucks, you want to use like a, a two millimeter or a three millimeter at most. Um, it just looks better. Um, when they're on the smaller side than on the bigger side. And so what I'm going to do is I have already got my machine threaded with one thread. I'm now going to add another thread. And I'm going through the same tension discs. I'm going through uh, exactly the same as I did. But now in this case, you cannot use, if you have an auto threader, you cannot use your auto threader with this feature for obvious reasons. <laughs> You've got two needles here. Sorry, I bumped my camera. You've got two needles here and you have to do, you have to thread these individually. This is just about the only time you have to do this individually. So I apologize, I'm gonna get my big cans in here and I'm gonna thread the left side and I'm going to thread the right side. And then what you're gonna do is just, you're gonna mark your, your project. Um, you're going to do like water soluble thread, or I'm sorry, water soluble marker. Um, again, don't use a ballpoint pen because it won't come out. <laughs> um, but what you're going to do is you're going to, um, I'm ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is uh, remember, you have to go into your machine and tell it that you're using a double needle. So it sets for that. And uh, all you're going to do now is just create a line of stitching. So let me go ahead and do that. You may have to play with this and adjust your tension. Like I always say, do a test first. You always want to test. Don't test on your project because then you have to rip out and, and nobody, trust me, nobody hates ripping out more than I do. I can't stand it. So look at that little raised area, that little bump there. Hopefully you can see that. Isn't that cool? All I did is put a double needle and actually I don't have to adjust my tension. It, it's perfect. Now, I because... Love that. I have grooves on the bottom. I'm getting my groove on. Uh, because I have grooves, I can now place the, the pin tuck into this groove or this groove or this groove. And I now have an automatic adjustment for my pin tuck. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let me just snap my feet back on there. Again, my big hands in the way. Everybody's saying, thank you, thank you. And Rod, <laughs> you're so welcome. She said, these shows have been such a blessing during COVID. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I watch them all the time too, just because they're they're fun and informative. So now I'm going to let my pin tuck go down into one of these grooves and just do another. I'm going to drop my needle just to make sure it's where I'm at. Okay, drop my needles and start my next line of stitching. And I'm letting this pin tuck ride underneath that groove. And it, I don't I don't have to hold it. I mean, because there are those grooves. It works perfectly. So we'll go to this side, drop my presser foot. And if you're not sure where that groove is, there are little marks on the front of your foot. So you know exactly where the center of that is. So I'll drop again, let this pin tuck right, right underneath into that groove. And I can do as many of these as I want. Now look how beautiful those turned out, evenly spaced, Beautiful pin tucks. How easy was that? Just a sink, just a double needle and a foot. That's all it required. And I have, look how beautiful this would be either in a quilt. Um, you could use this in a modern quilt. You could do a line of stitching this way. So it folds your pin tucks like that. 
and have a line this way. So you almost get a wave effect, flattening your pin tucks. So, I mean, you could use this in garments. You can use this as insertions. Um, pin tucks are so much fun. That looks awesome, by the way. Absolutely. Everyone's saying this is absolutely amazing. Isn't that cool? I mean, these are the things, again, the things that we, we don't really think about. Needle was a little stiff in there. Um, so now I'm going to just Sandra pull says, So what would you use it for? Well, he's switching his foot. I mean, you'd use it for all kinds of things, Sandra, but typically oh, just yeah. decorating your fabric. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you had, um, where I've seen it, really really cute is where you have like a little girl's the bodice um of a dress and you have yeah. multiple lines of like vertical pin tucks or even horizontal pin tucks they're just so cute and again you can use now think about the possibilities of thread you saw this in black thread but imagine um if this were blue thread and i'll show this again blue thread or a variegated right um so i mean you could there's also or, or metallic threads i mean you have all sorts of decorative possibilities just for the thread alone let alone the three-dimensional qualities of the pin tucks. And you know, this, uh, everyone says it looks like smocking. It does. It looks exactly it like that. It will, yep, exactly. And you can use it for that. Um, this, now we're going to get into some, some, some odd ones. <laughs> that I go, and these are fun. These are so much fun. Um, the first one I want to show you is, is white. This is a Teflon foot. And what this does is it actually does have a layer of Teflon on the bottom. And you're like, what would I use that for? Well, <laughs> let me bring in a couple pieces of leather. So here's, this is real leather. This is smooth leather. I think it's a deer hide. Um, on the other side is suede. So for those of you who didn't know, the other side of your leather is that's how they get suede. They just put the rough side on the outside. So um, those of us who remember the 70s and suede coats, I am do remember that. I'm not going to say, <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to date myself. Also vinyl. If you've ever tried to sew vinyl, you know, those tote bags or pockets on a tote bag, um, it sticks. It can stick to your feet. And so what are the solutions? Most of us put like scotch tape underneath and we're trying to find something to hold our, make sure that our, our foot doesn't stick to the vinyl. And so we're trying to fight and put scotch tape underneath our feet. You know what? Just get a Teflon foot. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Um, and I'll show you, let me just grab a, a generic foot here. So on this leather, and I'll show you, um, on this leather, what happens is when you go to sew, it is, it is a rough surface and I'm pushing on this and it's sticking and I, you know, it's, it's sticking hard. So what that means is as I'm sewing, this is all going to bunch up. Whereas I switch over to the Teflon feet and it's like ice skating. It's like ice skating over this surface. Um, I can't do that with the other one. <laughs> it, the metal, ugh, metal just sticks. And then when you go to the suede side, it's even worse. I mean, this just doesn't even move. So this is all going to bunch up underneath my needle. Whereas if I switch over to the Teflon foot, this all just glides around like so, just right over that suede. So let me attach this and I'll show you what I mean here. And I'm going to do the suede side because that's usually the hardest. If you've ever tried to sew with suede, that can be the harder side to sew with. Oops, I keep bumping my camera. I apologize for that. I'll just say it's California. We have earthquakes there. That'll solve the whole problem. Okay. Now we're going to sew and we're going to stitch. Oops, my needle came undone. I'm going to thread my needle. We have these wonderful needle threaders. And it will remind you, see, this machine is smarter than I am. I forgot to put it back on a single needle because I was on double needle. So it's smarter than I am. Now we're gonna lower, and we're gonna stitch. Look how that glides. It just glides right over that suede. Not even holding. And for those of you who wonder if brothers can sew through leather, yep, they sure can. <laughs> they show, oh, they that show looks So again, just, you know, I, I can match match the, the right side to the right side. I can do, you know, whatever, however I want to do this. But you saw how smoothly that foot went over um, the leather. And, the vi and vinyl works the same way. If you've ever tried to work with sticky vinyl or even the clear vinyl, like some of the tote bags or some of the um, cosmetic bags that we make, it's frustrating because 
the feet stick to that um, to that clear acrylic. And if you have a Teflon foot, it just makes life so much easier for you. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference. And if you've never sewn on that and then you do it sometime and you're not using this foot, you'll be like, why? You'll know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's I've made bags like that. And before I got um, before I got this foot, it was really frustrating. So I'm like, how am I get? And like I said, then you got to try to get put scotch tape underneath there. Just get the Teflon foot. Trust me. <laughs> it works yeah. so much better. OK, this next one. Now we're getting some weird ones. And I know we only have a few minutes, so I'll try to I'll try to scurry through this. But um, <clears throat> I may have to come back because there's more. So this is a uh, Jerry. I think if we took a vote, can Jerry come back and finish with these feet? We're gonna be like, yes, like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, that works. All right. So now we have cording feet, and <clears throat> this is a three, a five, and a seven cording. So we can feed cording into these uh, into these little grooves which I'll show you quickly. And what's going to happen is all of those decorative threads that we all have and we all fell in love with at the quilt show or at the, at the sewing store, and now we realize we get home and they don't fit through the needle. Now you have to get involved with what they call bobbin, bobbin sewing, where you got to put it in the bobbin and, and sew upside down. And you're frustrated because you have these beautiful, thick decorative threads that you didn't think about wouldn't go through your needle. You can still use them. So this has, and I'll, let me see if I can get in here real quick. Um, this has grooves in it. And this is a little um, section. Let me see if I can do it this way. We can see this maybe. But you're going to feed your cording into here. You're snapping underneath, and it has little grooves. And you don't even have to hold on to your cording. It will automatically thread into the needle for you. Now you're going to switch to a multi-zigzag. Um, in my case, I can use a two-step. Uh, elastic zigzag that works fine um, and what it'll do is it will sew over all the cords so here I have um, this is kind of a thick shiny metallic purple metallic so I'm just going to feed it under the foot and snap it right into the groove I'm going to take a thicker metallic this is a shiny metallic again feed it under the foot and snap it right into the next groove this will be the middle and they're snapping right in. So again, like I said, you don't have to worry about it. It'll feed automatically. And here's another sort of metallic-y thread. The, none of these threads will go through my needle. None of them. So what I'm going to do is just get my fabric lined up, get my cording. And you're thinking, this is a hot mess. How is this going <laughs> to going to possibly feed. Watch this. Jerry, that's my word. That's it. That does look like a hot mess. <laughs> but if you notice, as I'm stitching, look how it feeds beautifully into that foot. I'm not even holding on to these cords. It, it's splitting it automatically. And so it's doing a multi-zigzag. It is stitching over all those cords. And watch this. Now this would look better with a matching thread or um, something like that. But look at that. All those are stitched. I could have used a monofilament thread. Um, I could have used a, a, a variegated thread. There. Um, but all of those are now stitched down. And look how even they are because the foot takes care of it. Can you imagine trying to do this with just a, a regular sewing foot, fighting with your machine, trying to use a regular sewing foot with this? There's no way you would keep all of those cords straight. Um, all right, one more. I'm going to show you one more. What was your machine setting set to for that, for your zigzag? That's a, it, it was a two-step elastic zigzag. You could do a three-step zigzag, like a stretch zigzag. Um, yeah. But you want to make sure that your needle is hitting all the cords so that they don't pull out. Thanks. So this is probably the wackiest one. And you're going to think there is something seriously wrong with Jerry, because watch this. Well, many people say that, which is fine. But <laughs> <laughs> these are glass beads. And you're thinking this is going to end in disaster, but it is not. Watch this. This is called a pearl and piping foot. You can use, um, let me get my white piece of paper. You can oh, use this. going to be like a wow moment. Somebody just asked about this. They're going to be so excited. They think you read their mind. Look at the large groove that's in there. You can get some big pearls and beads in there. So that's all going to be fed here. Now, what you're going to set your machine for is simply a zigzag. That's it. But I'm going to show you a little hint with that. 
I'm going to take my glass beads. I know, and you all are cringing at this. <laughs> I can, this I can not, feel, I can see their heads shaking and their this eyes. This is like <laughs> just going to end horribly. I'm going to <laughs> drop my presser foot. Notice how the beads have now, um, they're locked into that groove. They are not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do, now I need to just set my machine for just a regular zigzag. And I'm going to turn, this is the one time where you're going to turn your hand wheel because you want to double check uh, what your machine is set at. Now, in my case, I've already done the, the work ahead of time. I need to set this for a 6.0 width. And I need to set it at a 2.0 length because what I want to happen is I want the thread to lay in between the beads so that you don't see the thread. Um, and it sews it down perfectly. So what I'm going to do, this is one time you use the hand wheel. I'm going to, let me get my thread out of the way. I'm going to just double check where the jump is and make sure it's clearing the beads. And it does because I've already preset this. All right, so now that I'm clear, all I have to do is start stitching. And I'm stitching slow. This isn't a race. Again, I'm not even holding on to it. The foot is doing all the work. Wow. There we go. Not a single bead was hit, not it. <laughs> and if you notice, the thread has gone right in between each of the beads. You can't even see it. Now, if I were going to use a matching thread, um, that would be best. I'm using dark so that you can see it. But because I, I kind of pre-tested this, and again, remember I said test everything, I know the settings so that the thread goes right in between each of the beads so you don't even see it. Now, if you want a, a really, this is great just as a line as it is, but watch this. I'm going to take this and fold it, oh. and I now have an edging. So Love imagine it. for pillows or, or a garment of some kind, uh, a little dress or a cuff or a sleeve, um, a collar. They do like a little Peter Pan collar and have this as the edging. So all you got to do is just sew it down, fold it over, and then finish the collar as normal. And you didn't have to try to attach this on the edge. Did it all for you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? That that's absolutely amazing. So uh, Jerry, just real quick while you have that up there. Uh, yeah. It, uh, you would just check the mill. Someone was asking what was the millimeter of uh, those beads. It, do you know? Um, my oh, gosh. I'm going to say that these are th three, I believe, three millimeter. I've got the tag here somewhere. But, yeah, um, again, you can, you know, it's not going to do like big, giant, like beach ball size. Uh, beach <laughs> size. <laughs> but it will do like uh, all the way up to like three millimeter beads. So I could have used a smaller, like a real, like a small, like seed beads, a line of seed beads that would work, too. Um, Gosh, but this is awesome. So do you have to change the tension or anything on your machine when you're using the glass beads like that? No, no. As a matter of fact, my machine is automatically set um, for the regular tension. Uh, like I said, I just adjusted the width and the length um, and I did a quick test. Uh, but because these are so far apart with the zigzag, if I didn't like it or if I wanted to reuse the beads, just take a uh, seam ripper, which is a four letter word in my world, and just very quickly <laughs> run a line down here, and it will separate the beads very quickly from. Oh your, my gosh! Your piece. Isn't that cool? Yeah, Stacy said she's bowing down to you. Could you just give uh, them the name of that foot one more time? Paula wants to write it down. Uh, yeah, it's the pearl and piping foot. That's that's what it's called in Brother World. Um, again, check with your manufacturer, but most have that. Most most manufacturers have some sort of piping or beading type of foot. So we didn't even get into piping yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, but you know, I love how you did that and then you folded it and could use it for trim. That's such a great idea. Yeah. So again, you talk about creating your own fabric, you're creating your own trim now. Wow. And again, awesome. if you used your zipper foot, you could now use that as like a piping. So now your beading could go around a pillow. Um, I mean, very quickly, I did that so quickly. Um, and, and very simple. And and people will, do you know how much money people would pay for a custom pillow like that? It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I have so a ton it, of those beads too, because I love to do hand beading. I usually yeah. would stitch that on by hand. I never even thought of using that foot. And right. I sew all the time. So I, I, this is why I love the shows too. I, I always pick up something cool and new. I do too. I say that at events. I say, you know, folks, if you have any ideas, I learn from you just as much you may, as you may learn from me. So <laughs> I'm always this right. Is awesome. 
Uh, everybody, oh, Julie, she, he's using the Luminaire, but you could use this this foot on many brother machines. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. As long as you can get the foot for that machine, it'll work. Marcia says, it's amazing. So some of you are asking, just a quick question. So Jerry, going back to that pin tucking, which ever, that was like, all of these have been wow moments. And don't forget, you can go back and watch this video as many times as you want, yeah. <laughs> because you'll want to go back and take notes and things like that. But with that, uh, someone asked, is there a way to judge how much that pin tucking, if you did rows of it, like a smocking, how much it's going to take up your fabric, how much extra to buy? Right. And that is a consideration. Um, like we didn't even get into like the ruffling and the piping. Um, ruffling, again, you have to usually use like a 50% type of thing, like a ratio. Um, if you're going to ruffle something, you usually want to buy 50% more. So I would say whatever, um, whatever fabric you want to put that on, buy twice as much. So think twice as much. So if you're going to do a little bodice, um, measure the bodice or, or even for your, yourself, you want to do a little line of pin tucking. It will take up some of space. I would go, you know, judge it based on if you're filling the whole thing, it's at least 50% more. If you're just doing a couple rows, maybe, you know, a, a quarter yard more or something like that. But again, this is one of those things where you want to do the decorative stitching before you measure your pattern. Don't measure your pattern and then do your stitching because it's it will suck up some of that and now your your garment will fit. So always do your decorative stuff first and then use your pattern. I totally agree. I totally agree. And sometimes, you know, even with the ruffler, someone um, if you're using a big project, someone will say, "Well, tell me exactly how much." I'm like, "Why would you want to? Just double it <laughs> and yeah. start with that. Why make yourself math crazy, right?" And I love math, but that would make me math crazy. Well, and especially with the ruffler, if you, it depends, are you doing real tight ruffles? Are you doing real just a wavy ruffle? That will determine how much. Um, I, I always say buy 50%. That way you're good. If you're doing a really tight ruffle, it will take up 50%, but then you have a little bit extra fabric you can use for another project. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Everybody's saying, thank you. Thank you. This well, was fun. I love, I love doing this stuff. I love these um, showing things where people go, I didn't know you could do that. Or <laughs> <laughs> I could think of just watching this show today. I could think of so many fabric design challenges here. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this could be awesome. Awesome. Well, I mean, even with the pin tucking, you don't have to do just straight lines. You can overlap them and do like uh, a, like a cross hatching of mm -hmm. you know, do like three pin tucks and then go the opposite direction. Do a ninety degree or forty five degree and then or ninety degree a math math challenge. It's like common <laughs> core. Common core. I don't know what's going on. The 90 degree, and then you have a uh, cross hatching, and that would make a beautiful insertion, like a sleeve or oh gosh, uh, insertion into a bodice. I think or, I'd rather just stitch it all over so it's like just the messiest ever, and then they can all be messy because they can yeah. all line up together. <laughs> and again, you can change your thread. You could use a metallic thread, a cotton thread, a variegated thread, um, all of these things on the same project. Now you've turned what is a traditional uh, sewing technique into something modern and funky. That's awesome. Hey, Barb, I know you're coming on. You're going to be talking about ruffling again. You know, I, you know, what would be super fun is to have one foot and have challenge all of us to do something different with it. I bet you that would be like the most wow show ever from the creativity of that. Don't you think so? I mean, there's so much you could do. Absolutely. I, I'm on a, I'm on a Facebook page now where they're doing Lone Stars, Lone Star quotes. Oh. And it's just, well, the one in the background right behind me. They're doing that one. And it's just so amazing to see the color combinations people have come up with. And, you know, they lay, they've laid their fabric out and they, they've presented it to the group going, what do you think? Is this going to work? And people are like, I don't know. And all of a sudden they, they sew it up and you're just like, that's incredible. So it's, it's so much fun to see what people come up with and how creative they are. It sure is. And by the way, a lot of people were asking at the beginning, I didn't even share the comments, but they were go, doing the wow moment from that quilt behind you. They love it. That is, um, that's a Jan Krenz pattern. It's called uh, from her book, Lone Star Quilts and Beyond. Um, she's doing something on Facebook. Now, I'm not trying to make this an advertisement for her, but <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's a it's a really great way to learn how to do Lone Star Quilts. And I also teach, I teach that class as well. So that's awesome. So uh, do you, Jerry, do you have a website or anything or where they can find where your classes are? 
I'm on Facebook. I'm not really, I don't really have a website. I, I did that, but I don't really sell anything. I'm a brother educator. So I love doing that. I love um, sharing and creating, which I do a lot of sharing on Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, I am Jerry Granada Quilts. Um, Jerry Granada Quilts on Instagram. So I post a lot of things there as well. A lot of pictures. I'll have to make sure I add that next time. I didn't realize that's what it was. It'll be on there next time because right now I just have brother and myself up there. I got to get Jerry up there. What the heck? <laughs> Well, my Lone Star is hiding a quilt. I can't show it just yet, but it's showing um, my new competition quilt that I'm working on. And I'm Ooh. showing little teasers uh, on Instagram. So if you want to see what I'm working on, um, it's turning out really well. Definitely. So follow Jerry on Instagram. And also on AngelaWolf.com, what I do is I post whoever's coming on for the educators and the brand ambassadors. So you can go back and you can go and see when Jerry's going to be on next as well. So Jerry, this show was awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Super Thank you. informative. I'm watching all the comments and everyone's like, oh, my mind is blown. <laughs> well, I, I apologize because I, you know, I'm, as I'm demoing, it's hard for me to see the comments. So I do appreciate you, um, Angela, um, you know, interrupting so to speak and i, and think you can I get to watch you and be like wow and then read their comments and hang out with them while they're saying wow i get the yeah, best of both yeah. worlds <laughs> so if i didn't if i didn't answer your question i apologize um i would love to come back and do even more where i'm you know if you you can ask your questions then and we can kind of go through some things there too so don't don't let go of your questions. Hold on to that. That sounds fantastic. And I think we did catch a lot of them. And then uh, Brother was answering quite a few of them as well. So remember that. Go back and watch the show. Take notes. Write down your questions. When Jerry comes back with more feet <laughs> to talk about, we'll take a little break and answer questions from the show too. So if you have questions, remember, write them down, bring them back. Because Jerry, can't wait to see you again. Right away, Angela. Thank you so much for having me on. I do appreciate this so much. And thank you to everyone who came. Um, it was it was so much fun. I hope to see you again soon. Awesome. Everybody's saying thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're getting like the applause. <laughs> <laughs> everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you again for taking time out of your day. There's so much to do now, although because it's not everyone was saying thank you for these during COVID, but now a lot of people are back to work. We so appreciate you watching and we love to see what you're working on. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram. And if you do hashtag brother sews, they love to see what you're working on too. And sometimes they share it. So awesome. Jerry, have a wonderful day. I can't wait to see what's behind that quilt. <laughs> it's, it's coming. It's coming soon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>